Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about the human cell. Um, we're starting to get into the more interesting part of the human body. We've already talked about the molecules, the makeup, the organelles, which is what we're going to talk about today. So one thing about the human cell is that they are similar but yet different. All right, so here I have example like the stem cells. Um, here is the neuron, which is your nerve cell. This is what your nerve cell normally looks like. We have here the red blood cells. Um, we have enterocytes, which are gonna be the cells found in your intestines. We have here a blastocyst. We have a fat cell. This is what a typical fat cell looks like. Um, and then we have epithelial cells, which makes up the linings of your skin, the linings of your blood vessels. We have here chondrocyte, which is your cartilage cell. And then we have here the muscle cells, which are like the cardiac muscle cells, which are found in your heart, your smooth muscle cells, which could be found in your digestive system, and then the skeletal system, which will be found on your skeletal uh, muscle, which is attached to your bone. So you can see that they look very different, but they have something in common. Um, these um, things that you see in the middle of them, which appear to be circular, are gonna be the nucleus or nuclei. Some of, some of them have more than one. Um, we are missing that in red blood cells, however, and that's because a mature red blood cell has to unfortunately dump its nucleus so that it can do its job. So let's get um, started and look at what the human cell looks like. So this is what a human cell looks like, a general human cell. We've added other stuff that um, you normally would not see. Um, so for example, you know, I'll talk about the extracellular features, which means these are the stuff found outside the cell and all cells will not have both microvilli, for example, and um, have a cilia and a flagella at the same time. So, but we just kind of just jumbled everything together so we can talk about it. All right. So one of the first things you're going to notice is going to be the outer most layer or the outermost membrane and we call this a cell membrane we call this a plasma membrane this gives the cell some definition this gives the cell you know like we're able to say well this is cell one this is cell two all right um and this is usually this um transparent blue structure right here the other thing that is obvious is this big red thing inside the cell that has been sliced open so you can see what's inside. That is the nucleus. Um, the nucleus is so interesting. It's so amazing. It's um, the genetic library. All the information about a cell is literally located there. Um, I'm going to be talking about it in the next few slides a little bit more in detail, but you can see it has a nucleolus. I like to call it like a mini nucleus inside a nucleus. It has a nuclear envelope, which is, you know, this nuclear envelope right here. Um, it's kind of like the plasma membrane of the cell. All right, you can see the nuclear envelope, kind of like the plasma membrane. Um, it has nuclear pores, which uh, will allow certain substances to pass through. And then the chromatin, I like to define chromatin as just like a jumbled up, packed, condensed um, DNA form because, you know, it does contain a lot of information in here. So that's the nucleus. And another thing I want to talk about will be around, surrounding the nucleus, around the nucleus, you're going to see something very obvious. This green structure that has, um, blue on it, this is going to be the endoplasmic reticulum. There's actually two of it. There's a rough endoplasmic reticulum and then a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So how can you tell the difference? Well, someone might be like, well, the other one's white, the other one's green, but 
Um, the first time scientists actually saw this, they saw these blue dots on the rough ER on this endoplasmic reticulum and they, it appeared rough. So that's why they call it rough endoplasmic reticulum or rough ER. And this squiggly thing right here did not have any um, blue dots, which are the ribosomes. So they termed them smooth endoplasmic reticulum or smooth ER. And while we're on the topic of the blue little dots that we're seeing, we've seen some on the nucleus, on the rough ER, all um, surrounding, I mean, all floating freely in the cell. These are ribosomes, all right? These are ribosomes. They play a role in protein synthesis. Like they are basically the stuff that make proteins. And another thing we're going to look at, we're seeing is this orange thing right here, which is called the Golgi complex or the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi apparatus. So, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Very interesting. It's amazing how all of these organelles, they all have their own job. They all have their own roles inside the cell. And another thing we're going to see, you're going to see this bean shaped structure. Um, this one is open um, halfway through. This one is partially open. These are called mitochondria. You know, mitochondrion for one and mitochondria for many of them. Um, I'm going to be talking about them in the next few slides. These are the ones that actually make cell. So if you've ever wondered, okay, I know our bodies make cell, but what exactly in our bodies, in our cell makes um, energy? That's going to be the mitochondria. All right, they are responsible for converting your food, your chemical energy into um, mechanical energy, into energy that you can actually use. So another thing I want to talk about are going to be peroxisome and lysosome. So they look similar. Um, the peroxisome is smaller. I will talk about their function, very, very important functions. Um, and then another thing I want to talk about are going to be the cytoskeleton. All right, the cytoskeleton, um, you can see here, there are three of them, the microtubule, microfilament, intermediate filaments. So just like, you know, when someone's talking about a skeleton, you're thinking already given shape, given form to something. So that's what the cytoskeleton cytoskeleton is going to do is actually going to give the cell shape. Um, it will actually help the plasma membrane in maintaining its shape. And this is the reason why all the, you know, ribosomes are not in one corner and all the mitochondria are not jumbled up in another corner because these cytoskeleton are actually going to be kind of like platforms or tracks that these organelles are going to sit on. Um, and then we have extracellular structures. So extracellular structures is not usually when we say extra, it means another, but these are just mean they are outside their cell, the cell. They're not going to be inside the cell. And these are going to be structures um, like microvilli, um, which are going to be found in some cells, not in all cells. They play a role in absorption. And then cilia is going to be another one that we find outside the cell. Their job is to help move the mucus, for example. And the flagellum. There's only one cell in the whole of you, the human body that has flagellum, and that's the sperm cell. So this definitely tells us that female, the female body, would not have flagellum, which is flagellum is a singular firm, for, um, term. So I forgot to also mention the inside of the cell is called cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm is going to be, you know, basically the fluid or the gel like structure inside the cell. And then you have the organelles inside. All right, so let's take a look at the plasma. So the cell or the plasma membrane, it acts like a door. It covers and protects the cell and it basically separates the cells from the extracellular fluid because the cell, even though there's fluid inside the cell, outside the cell, there's also fluid. So, you know, the plasma membrane basically separates and also help to uh, link other um, cells. This is how other cells are linked to um, um, to each other. 
and acts like a door, controlling what goes in, what comes out, regulation. You know, you don't want too much sodium inside the cell. You don't want, you know, too much glucose to leave the cell. You kind of just want to regulate it. So this, when we zoom in, this is what we see that the plasma membrane looks like. Um, you see almost two layers. We call this the lipid bilayer. I'm going to be talking about the plasma membrane in another video. But there are certain structures that you um, that stands out, like these blue structures, which are proteins. It looks like they're embedded, sticking, you know, getting stuck inside the plasma membrane. Um, I'm going to talk about them acting as channels. This is how, you know, substances such as sodium used to get inside the cell. And cholesterol, all right? There's going to be cholesterol embedded in, um, in the plasma membrane. Um, there's going to be glycolipids and so on. So I'm going to be talking about, you know, the plasma membrane in another video. So I mentioned cytoplasm. So cytoplasm is actually made up of two things, cytosol. Just the fluid, the gel-like fluid inside the cell is um, considered to be cytosol, all right? And when you now add the organelles, then we now call that cytoplasm. So this cytoplasm is not just water, it contains nutrients, ions, proteins, waste products, um, you know, all these other stuff. The thing I want to talk about is going to be the nucleus. You know, I kind of mentioned the nucleus briefly. It is the largest organelle in the cell. Um, and we're going to see why a cell like red blood cell will decide to dump its um, nucleus in order to do its job. If um, the job of a red blood cell is to carry oxygen, is to carry, you know, nutrients and waste, and half of it is occupied by the nucleus, how is it supposed to do its job? All right, so this is a control center, you know, uh, the genetic library, DNA is located there. All the information needed to run the cell is there. And to talk about the importance of the nucleus, even when a sperm cell fertilizes an egg cell, the ovum, the only thing that enters the egg is just the nucleus, no mitochondria, no, nothing else. It's just a nucleus. And, you know, you can have the baby looking just like the dad, you know, amazing. Um, the nucleus also contains nucleoplasm. You hear in the word cytoplasm in there. So basically this is the cytoplasm of the nucleus, um, which will contain ions, enzymes, nucleotides, RNA, and then it has a nuclear envelope, which acts like the plasma membrane, but just for the nucleus. So this again helps to the nucleus to be separated from the cytoplasm. The pores, the nuclear pores, this control the movement of substances between nucleus and the cytoplasm. And then, you know, I mentioned chromatin. Chromatin is basically loosely coiled DNA, but these cells are not dividing. Unlike chromosomes, which are more tightly coiled DNA, and here the cells are going to be um, dividing, and this is where we're going to basically have condensed chromatin. This is where genes, hereditary information, you know, is found. Um, what the cell likes, what the, I mean, the human being as a whole likes or does not like, um, basically everything, all the information. Um, is found there. Nucleoli, the mini nucleus I talked about, this is made up of RNA, enzymes, and histones. Um, and they, the job of the nucleoli is to make our RNA, which is ribosomal RNA, and ribosomal subunits. So on to the endoplasmic reticulum, all right, also known as ER. So I like to think of this being like, you know, um, the the factory where stuff gets done, all right? They're flat tubes with filled, filled interiors, two varieties, the rough ER and the smooth ER. The big difference is just the rough ER as pro, um, ribosomes, which tells us, even if you don't know much about the job of rough ER, the fact that it has ribosomes and the fact that the job of ribosomes is to make proteins, you automatically will know that this I don't, might not know much about the rough ER, but it's going to make proteins. 
And then there's a smooth ER. So smooth ER, we talked about it not having any ribosomes, right? Not having any ribosomes. So this would have nothing to do with proteins. Instead, it's going to have everything to do with lipid metabolism, the absorption, synthesis, and transportation of fats, um, detoxification of some chemicals. And, you know, in a muscle cell, we're going to see, see play a role in the storage and release of calcium. So here again, you can see the, the rough ER and then you can see the smooth ER. So I'm going to talk about what is going to be the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus is the complex. This reminds me of like the postal service, um, like that commercial shipping, packaging, sorting, modifying. All right. So this is basically what the Golgi apparatus does. Um, it modifies, sorts, and package secretions coming from the endoplasmic reticulum, whether from the smooth ER or from the rough ER. And it also renews or modifies the plasma. And the endoplasmic reticulum is so unique in that it actually has a, a, a part called cyst, which is the receiving part. And then it has a part that's like shipping. So receiving and shipping part, which is so interesting. And, you know, you always know what it looks like because it's going to have a, a sack or stack. It looks like, you know, you have a stack of uh, structure right here. And then on to the mitochondria. So mitochondria, we say is the powerhouse of the cell. This is where energy is made. Um, it contains what we call criste. Um, and then there's like a fluid inside, which is going to be the matrix portion. And this is the only exception. We are going to find DNA here. Usually, besides the nucleus, you don't find DNA anywhere else except in the mitochondria. All right, it has its own DNA, has its own RNA, has its own ribosome, so it's basically self-sufficient. You know, from an evolutionary standpoint, it's actually believed that the mitochondria used to exist by itself and then, you know, later on develop the mutual relationship with the cell. So if you're ever watching um, those crime shows and you're saying like, oh, the suspect, we couldn't find the DNA, but if you can get the suspect's mother to give you her DNA, um, you can actually get a mitochondrial DNA, which is only gotten from the mom. You can get the mitochondrial DNA, all right? And that you can, you know, eliminate um, the suspect if needed. So this is where, this is the power grid of the cell, all right? So you would tend to see that um, a lot of more mitochondria in cells are active, doing a lot of work, all right? Um, and it, it's just so amazing. And the next thing to be lysosomes and peroxisomes. So I kind of mentioned that um, they remind me of the garbage, um, you know, garbage recycling. Um, that's really what their function is. For example, the lysosomes, um, you know, contain digestive enzymes. His job is to clean up inside the cell. It attacks bacteria, viruses. Um, it helps to recycle any damaged organelles. So if you have like a mitochondria that's not really, you know, working anymore, um, or a ribosome is going to recycle it. Um, and if it's not able to do that, um, it's just going to undergo a procedure called autolysis, which is basically self-destruction of damaged cells um, and, or, you know, um, killing off bacteria or, or any pathogens. And peroxisomes are usually smaller than lysosomes. They detoxify substances such as alcohol, and they actually produce hydrogen peroxide. Yes, you do produce oxygen, hydrogen peroxide. So almost like a bleach inside your cell, just helping to like clean stuff up. So depending on the cell, you're gonna have more or less of some structure. So for example, if you if it's the liver that's is jo the job of the liver is to detoxify substances like alcohol. You're going to see peroxisomes playing a big role here. Um, if you are a mitochondria in the muscle cell, you're going to see more mitochondria working there. So you tend to see more of these organelles in some cells that need them more than the others. But this is what a generalized cell organelle looks like. That's going to be it for today. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.